Howdy y'all. In this very cold morning, but hey, at least it's sunny. That's what one of my students said. I would like to go back to the subject of spelling. So we talked about the we talked about the concept of phonetic spelling. I'm sorry, phonemic spelling on my last video. So I would like to now go into the concept of morphophonemic spelling. Alright, so morphology is the study of the units of language, the units of speech that are significant, uh, that have a, a particular grammatical or lexical significance. So for example, uh, the sound t, even though it is a phoneme, a unit, a meaningful unit of sound in English, it doesn't mean anything in and of itself. Uh, now, on the other hand, if you say, uh, if you say two, then that's a morpheme because it's a word, so it has a lexical meaning. It's a preposition, right? In a combination with other wor with other morphemes, uh, it can form a sentence. Or you could also say, for example, if you say cows. You could say that you have two morphemes, one word, but two morphemes. Uh, one cow, because it's a unit of meaning, and the other z, which is the morpheme for the plural. It's there to show you the plural. So it's meaningful. Of course, it can't, uh, of course it can't go by itself. Uh, you know, it, it can't uh, appear by itself. It has to appear fi uh, affixed to the end of a word but it's still a meaningful unit. So, what is morphophonemic spelling? It is a spelling system which not only, which is kind of a mixed system. Um, it's partly phonetic, I'm sorry, partly phonemic. Jesus, I'm getting all, all tangled up in my own terminology. It's partly phonemic and partly shows morphology. And all the spelling systems I'm familiar with in the four languages which I know are morphophonemic. None of them is truly 100% phonemic. So in the case of English, how can we prove this? Uh, of course, again, leaving aside the fact that English is quite irregular in its spelling because of historical reasons, we can see this, we can see this with the past tense marker for so-called regular verbs. So, for example, the verbs wish, beg, and create, right? The past simple for these verbs is wished, begged, and created. So, uh, we have, we have, at the end of the verb, three different sounds. T for wished for bag and id for created but when you spell them when you spell these forms uh, you spell them all with ed uh, wished is w i s h i d e d excuse me uh, bag is b e g g e d and created is c r e a t e d so even though they all sound different, wished, begged, created, they are all spelled the same. This is a, so this tells you that uh, the, the spelling of the past tense marker is not phonemic, it's morphemic. Because you are using a one-to-one -one correspondence. You have uh, a, a same spelling for a same unit of meaning, and the unit of meaning is uh, past tense marker on a regular verb. So, uh, you can say, well, why keep it that way? Why, if the spelling should be reformed, and if it was possible to reform it, why don't we just change it, you know, wished, we could spell it with a T, begged we could spell it with a D and created we could spell it with an ED. Well, surely it would help people to write 
it would help people to spell because all they would have to do is say the word out loud or think about it and then spell it out but it could be argued that having the same marker for the same unit of meaning actually helps people to read um, and we're talking of course about native speakers and about children so it's, uh, it's an argument to consider that's uh, it about morphophonemic spelling see you guys next time